Blender 2.8 probably looks like a minor release on the surface, but it's not. It is a major milestone release that they've actually been building towards for the best part of a decade. There are so many improvements and changes and new features in 2.8 that it's almost like an entirely new piece of software. So if you've tried Blender in the past and you didn't like it, I would say now's a good chance to give it another old try. In this video, I'm gonna explain exactly why with six reasons why I think this new Blender 2.8 is such a game changer for the industry. Starting with number one, it's easier to use. So a common complaint of the past is that Blender does things differently for sometimes no good reason. Like for example, selecting objects was right click. Well, that is no longer the case. It is now left click by default and right click does what you would expect, which is bring up more options. You can change it if you want, privacy of your own home, I'm not gonna judge, but it's now left by default. Uh, it's also less reliant on hotkeys by default meaning that there is a toolbar with recognizable icons on the left-hand side that actually function the way you would expect. You can use the same hotkeys if you wanted to, but uh, the toolbar is there if you don't know them. There's also a viewport gizmo in the top right-hand corner, which besides being really helpful for those who are new and wanna know how to navigate, it's also great when you've got a laptop with a trackpad and you forgot to bring the extra mouse. So that's nice. Uh, there's also mouse tips along the bottom bar, which will change depending on what state you're in or what what button you're holding down. Um, and there's an industry compatible key map that you can switch to that'll make all the hotkeys change to those familiar in Max, Maya, etc. which, you know, existing Blender users won't care about. But for those big studios that want to switch to Blender, it'll make it faster because they don't need to spend as much time retraining their artists. And one of the most exciting things is uh, these workspace tabs along the top there, which when you click on them, it will uh, rearrange the layout into the most optimal space for that task and also enter you into that task mode. So if you click edit, it'll also enter you into edit mode, um, which makes it really fast for switching between tasks, which is something that 3D artists do all the time. And finally, there is a proper dialogue box that appears when you try to quit without saving. There was one before, but it wasn't in every operating system and it was kind of janky, but now it's built properly into the software and it's really nice. Number two, it's real time. So one of the most exciting features of Blender 2.8 is of course the EV real time rendering engine. So if you're familiar with Marmoset or Unreal Engine, it functions very similarly to those. It's got volumetric, subsurface scattering, everything that you would expect. Big advantage is, is that it's built right into a fully functioning 3D software. So you don't need to import or export or anything. It's right there. You can do your editing, your sculpting, texture painting in real time. So this is useful, of course, because it's really fast renders, <laughs> which is nice, especially for things like long form content, like say a kid's TV show, or for things that don't need to be photorealistic, like motion graphics, um, you can do fast renders, but also for your creative process. So while you're building a scene, you can make decisions more faster in a real time environment. And then the cool thing is, is you can switch to cycles, which is the ray traced unbiased rendering engine that Blender also comes with. Um, and all your shaders are the same. So you don't need to bother like rebuilding any materials. You can switch between EV and cycles and uh, they're cross compatible, which is absolutely awesome. Number three, it has probably one of the most powerful viewports out of any 3D software right now. So this is separate to EV. This, I'm just talking about the viewport, which is this section right here. And as artists, this is where we spend probably 90% of our time. And we use this obviously to help us understand the 3D scene, the geometry and everything like that. And when we don't understand that well enough, like if we click on the wrong object or we're sculpting something and we can't understand the geometry of the object, that takes time away from the art. That's wasted time. So Blender 2.8 basically rewrote the entire viewport to make it better 
for artists to understand. So right out of the gate, there's a bunch of little changes uh, in wireframe mode. There's like depth, so you can understand like which parts of the wireframe are closer to you than others, so you don't end up clicking on the wrong vertice. Uh, there's like little tiny tweaks, like when an object's intersecting another one, you see like a faint line around it. And then in the top right-hand corner, you've got all the settings you would ever need to change how the viewport looks, which you can do on the fly to help you better understand what you're looking at. So you can choose your type of shading. You've got all the different shading types you would ever want uh, and you've also got a new flat shading type which is very useful for understanding the silhouette of an object it's awesome uh, then you got mesh coloring all those settings including a new one called random uh, which gives each object a unique color which is surprisingly useful to see which objects are actually separate to others and so you can click on the right one uh, and then you got all the usual settings like ambient occlusion depth of field shadows etc uh, and there's a new x-ray mode which i love as an alternative uh, to wireframes because it makes everything slightly transparent uh, you can quickly isolate objects by their type with this menu you can remove outlines and wireframes here um, and my favorite feature of all is just a quick press enable disable overlays so it'll hide all the outlines and lines and things like that and just show you the meshes and just enables you to like focus on your work and see what it is that you've built and I use that all the time I love it um, and then finally there's a look dev mode this button there uh, will basically use the EV rendering engine to turn on all your materials um, and then light it with some built-in HDRIs which makes it really handy just to preview materials before you do a final render Number four, it's going pro. So Blender has a reputation for being a bit of a hobbyist tool. And that makes sense because it's free. But with all the open movie productions, uh, new studios adopting Blender and professionals becoming interested in Blender, it's got features now that professionals need. So most recently we got the filmic color space, which offers a superior dynamic range, which I've talked about in a previous video. Um, and in this release, we get things like a proper layer system in the form of collections, which is of course essential when you've got large amounts of content and you need to organize it. You can edit multiple objects at the same time, which is amazing. Uh, and you can also pose multiple rigs at the same time, which actually makes me wonder how on earth they used to animate characters interacting previously, but now you can, so that's great. Uh, cloth physics produce better results thanks to angular bending. The unit system is more consistent everywhere. Little changes, but it all helps. And there's quick faves, which offer a faster method for accessing functions that you use repeatedly. Basically, you right click on something, go add to quick faves, and then when you click Q, when you press Q, um, it'll just pop up and it'll be right there. So it's really handy to like speed up your workflow for things that you use repeatedly. And thanks to the guys who made the Netflix film Next Gen, uh, which was tangent animation, and they used Blender for that whole film, uh, Blender now has Cryptomat, which is a superior industry standard way of masking, um, both inside of Blender and allows it to be exported to software like Nuke. Um, side note as well, in the last two weeks alone, Epic Games donated $1.2 million and Ubisoft just became a gold sponsor. So I would be willing to bet we're going to see even more pro features added in the coming 12 months. Number five, it's more realistic. So the Cycles rendering engine got some much needed love as well. Uh, it got IES support for lighting finally, which is of course very crucial for ArcViz. Uh, a principled hair shader with dead simple controls for changing the look of hair in one shader. A principled volume shader, which enables you to render fire and smoke together. Previously it was a crazy node setup, now it's just one node. Uh, random walk method for subsurface scattering, which basically produces superior results for thin and curved objects. Objects. A bevel shader, which adds a bevel effect, but just on the shading level, not touching the geometry. And an ambient occlusion node, which offers uh, far more versatile use than the old ambient occlusion shader, which is nice. Uh, and vector displacement is supported as well, which basically standard displacement is up and down. Vector is side to side as well, which basically enables like cavity detail and things that you would previously not be able to create. And to top it all off, rendering in cycles is 70 to 100% faster than the previous release, thanks to some killer optimizations under the hood. And just today, NVIDIA announced their support for optics within Blender. 
and it's very early, but based on the tests that they've shared so far, it implies that a further 40 to 115% speed up might be just around the corner as well. And now the sixth and final reason that I think Blender 2.8 will be such a game changer is it does 2D as well. That's right, as if everything else that I've mentioned in this video isn't enough, Blender 2.8 now has a fully functioning 2D animation system. So basically, Blender's always had this grease pencil tool. Um, and it was, you know, it was a nice bonus. It allows you to draw on the screen, but it didn't really have much of a use case outside of that. But because Blender is open source, people within the community loved it and started to make little sketches with it. And then people wanted to do like more things with it than what you could. So uh, they, they broke off and they created this separate branch where they added in all the improvements and things they wanted. And Blender 2.8 is the release that finally merges it into the master, which means you now have a fully functioning 3D software and now a fully functioning 2D animation editor. So it's got everything you would need. It's got onion skinning, framing, layers, uh, all these like effects and things you can add on top in a non-destructive manner. Um, it's awesome. You could actually make an entire 2D film using Blender because they have. <laughs> this one right here was developed at the Blender Institute and, uh, and it was made with Blender, which is incredible. And I'm sure that once word gets out, more 2D animation studios are gonna start using it as well. And also as a little bonus here, um, this has nothing to do with Grease Pencil, but there is this new node that works in cycles called the shader to RGB node that converts any material into a basically a cartoonish representation. And it's incredible. It's like a make anime button. Um, so you take that, combine it with the 2D drawings, and I'm sure you could do something really powerful with it. So that's very cool. Um, and if 2D isn't your thing, if you're a 3D artist, the other really powerful thing you can use Grease Pencil for, something I've started doing with it, is to sketch out your ideas in 3D before you build it. So this is something that Yama Yurubev, who is a concept artist that works at Lucasfilms and has worked on a lot of major movies, um, he started using this and he loves it. And he's been like really outspoken as to how powerful this workflow is. Um, so he's actually got some tutorials on Gumroad. I'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out. But it's really Really powerful and it's something that uh, as far as I know not many other applications do so it's really cool now if you're thinking to yourself hmm Splendor looks all right maybe I should learn it well stay tuned because I've got just the YouTube tutorial for you but if you're an existing user of Blender, I think you'd agree that the foundation have outdone themselves with this release. It's absolutely awesome. And in the next few releases, they're planning even more like UDIM support, particle nodes, and they need your support. So I'm not associated with them in any way, uh, but I would encourage you to join the Blender Development Fund. You contribute a few bucks a month and it helps Blender grow. So I'm already a corporate uh, silver sponsor myself, but I want to encourage you to join as well. So if you do actually, after hearing this, uh, let me know in the comments because I'd love to know when, uh, when people join. Now, if you want to learn Blender, that's actually what this channel is all about. So if you hit subscribe, that'll at least ensure that you see all the future Blender 2.8 tutorials. And if you'd like to start learning right now, then this, is the tutorial that I recommend you start with. It's for complete beginners and it walks you through, through uh, creating a donut from start to finish. Um, so if you're ready to learn, go ahead, click on that and I will see you in there.